Hello everybody and welcome to another video on testing lunar items. After doing the research and testing on quartz bloom, link in the description for that video, the lunar items as a whole really started to pique my interest. I gave quartz bloom a shot, did some thorough research and arrived basically at the conclusion that I already had, which was that it's a pretty garbage item outside of some very specific and very rare situations. But what if it's an outlier? I began to wonder. What if my preconceived notions are wrong on other lunar items. Enter Brittle Crown. I plan on covering a few more Lunars in future videos. Yes, Transcendence is one of them. But today's topic is on the Crown. What does it actually do? Is it good? If so, when is it good? Do you pick it up on everyone or only certain survivors? Let's begin. The effect of the Crown is that on hit you have a 30% chance to gain 2 gold. The gold value is increased as time goes on. And when you take damage you lose gold equal to 100% of the health percentage you lost. There are a couple things to unpack with this effect. First, the amount of gold you gain per hit is not increased just by the amount of time you spent in a run, but more specifically the difficulty coefficient, which is a value that the game uses to determine, well, basically everything that happens in your run. If you've seen the first tips and tricks video I put out, this may start to ring a bell, but essentially the difficulty coefficient can be broken down into three parts. The number of players, the time spent in the current run, and the number of completed stages. Without going into further detail and convoluting what I'm trying to say, you can summarize its effect on Brittle Crown 2, the more players you have, the longer your run goes, and the more stages you complete, the more gold you will receive on hit from the Brittle Crown. And obviously, if you have more than one crown, you will also receive more gold. The exact formula is the number of crowns times the difficulty coefficient times three equals the amount of gold you gain per hit. It is also important to note that your proc coefficient affects the chance to receive gold, meaning something like Multi's Nail Gun, which hits at a rapid pace, will not get gold at the usual rate due to it having a 0.4 proc coefficient. That 30% chance from the crown goes all the way down to 12%. And remember that items also have proc coefficient, meaning your ATGs, Will of the Wisps, and Ukuleles, just to name a few, will also give you gold at a rate based on the respective proc coefficients. The second thing to unpack on Brittle Crown's effect is how the gold loss is calculated. You lose gold when taking damage, not when you are hit, equal to the percentage of maximum health you lost. This means that any form of damage, hellfire tincture, fall damage, and obviously enemy hits will each take your gold. Also, it makes the important distinction of 100% of the maximum health percentage you lost and not just maximum health. This means that Brittle Crown takes a percentage of your gold each time. So if you took damage equal to 10% of your HP, you will lose 10% of your gold as well. Let's start by talking about the gold reduction portion. First, because the gold loss is a percentage, the less gold you have, the less gold you will lose by flat value. Take this clip here. I have 15 gold and I'm being hit by a lesser wisp. The wisp fires a three round burst and each shot deals five damage. Note that the rose bucklers in my inventory are irrelevant because I am not sprinting. Oh, would you look at that? I never lose gold because the wisps five damage equates to just under 5% of my total HP and that same 5% of my gold by flat value doesn't even equate to a single gold piece. Therefore, no gold is lost upon hit. By extension, this also means that if if you block the damage outright with teddy bears, you will not lose any money. Does damage mitigation work too? What if you have rose bucklers or the jade elephant equipment to reduce damage taken? Yep, this also reduces the amount of gold loss because you are reducing the percent of HP lost. Now let's jump from one extreme to the other. What if you have a ton of gold with a tiny amount of HP? This is for all of you shaped glass stackers. Well, I'm sorry to say that the only thing that matters is the percentage of HP you lost and not the value. So if you have a ridiculously low amount of HP, you can still lose a ridiculously high amount of gold because the damage you will take will be a much larger percentage of your overall health. But the opposite is also true. If you have a ridiculously high amount of HP, the amount of gold you lose will be significantly lessened due to the damage you take Take being a smaller portion of that health percentage. The takeaway for Crown's gold loss is that to receive the smallest gold reduction possible, you need to A, have little gold to take away in the first place, B, have a ton of HP, or C, reduce or entirely negate the damage you take. Let's move on to gaining gold with the Crown. What affects it? As mentioned, the amount of gold per hit is only affected by the number of crowns you have and the difficulty coefficient. The damage value of your hits is entirely irrelevant, but that isn't to say that the 
the rate at which you get gold cannot be boosted. Remember, you have a chance on hit to gain the gold, so if you either increase the rate at which you hit or the chance of getting gold, both will increase the rate at which you get gold. It goes without saying that the more attack speed you have equals the more hits you deal, which equals more frequent rolls at that 30% chance to gain gold. You know what also gives you more frequent rolls at chance related items? Yup, the clover. If you're a newer player or have been playing but somehow living under a rock at the same time, the 57 leaf clover's effect is that it re-rolls chance related items effects. The exception are teddy bear's block chance, which is not affected. Every other chance related item in the game, however, is affected. Here is what normal gold gain from the brutal crown looks like. Nothing special. Obviously, this is on the first stage, so the difficulty coefficient is a low value, but you roughly get the idea. Now, here's what the same gold gain looks like with a single clover added into the mix. Pretty significant difference, right? All right, here's where things get spicy. Let's see what this looks like when you start getting some proc chaining going. You can see a drastic difference in gold gain due to the sheer number of hits taking place, albeit many of which have a sub 1.0 proc coefficient, so less than a 30% chance to gain the gold. Now let's throw in a clover and holy moly, this is what the kids call bonkers, I do believe. The takeaway for Crown's gold gain is that to receive the most gold possible, you need to A, increase the rate at which you hit stuff, so from your own attacks, attack speed, and or your items that have proc coefficient, or B, increase the chance at receiving gold in the first place. Currently, the only way to do this is by having a 57 leaf clover. All right, now that we know exactly what the crown does, what does it all mean? Is the crown good or not, Mr. Streamer? Who should I even take this thing on, even if it is any good? Due to how gold reduction works, the less amount of gold you have, the less amount of gold you lose, the crown is best suited for the early game, as in it is best on the literal first stage and gets worse as time goes on. However, I'd go as far to say that the entire first loop of a run is extremely good to have the Brutal Crown. You can easily dodge enemy attacks as there won't be enough enemies to overwhelm you from all sides at that point, and even if you do get hit, the amount of gold you lose won't be that high due to the enemies not dealing a ton of damage. Once you get later into the run, however, the downsides of taking damage become quite extreme. If you take a single hit past like the 45 minute mark, that means you probably lost about 50% of your HP and, well, there goes 50% of your gold as well. That being said, if you want to test it out or happen to get one in the early lunar pod, you should absolutely pick up a brittle crown in the first loop of a run. Just know that if you don't plan on obliterating, you will start to feel its gold reduction more as time goes on. Also, if you want to stack transcendence, infusions, and shield gens for tons of HP, the brittle crown actually synergizes quite well with the combo. However, the validity of building around those items in the first place is a topic for another video, hint hint. But wait, there is one more exception to choosing the crown, and that is your survivor choice. If you cannot hit frequently or cannot avoid damage easily, then I highly, highly recommend avoiding the crown entirely. Its boost to your early gold gain may seem very lucrative on someone like Multi, but you need to remember that he is essentially a sitting duck when it comes to taking enemy fire. Instead of just spouting information at you and trying to account for the sheer number of context that goes into making such a choice, here is a list of survivors I would take the crown on and those who I would not. Again, you can make an argument for the crown on anyone given the right context and a run, so this is more of a general rule of thumb and not not meant to be a black and white golden rule. I would take the crown on Commando, Huntress, Mercenary, and Rex, but only if you're using the alternate secondary and default shift, as both of those skills do not cost HP. And I would avoid the crown on Multi, Engineer, the turrets do not get you gold, Artificer, Rex, if you're using self damage abilities, Loader, and Acrid. Starting with the survivors that I recommend crown on, they each have a good mixture of frequent hits to proc the gold gain, as well as mobility and or damage reduction in Mercenary's case, to mitigate the gold loss. For the most part, you will be rapidly hitting enemies at any time while also avoiding most of which they throw at you. For those who I do not recommend the crown, the opposite is true. They either don't have enough hits to keep the gold gain flowing, such as the loader, artificer, or Akron, or they struggle avoiding damage and will simply be losing gold faster than gaining it. Engineer is an outlier because your turrets do not get you gold on hit. They do receive the crown as an item, but they get the gold, not you. So to summarize when to take a crown, the earlier, the better. The longer your run goes, not only does the downside of crown become more relevant, but you don't really need its gold gain in the first place past like the second or third loop. There will be plenty of monsters to kill and the gold you get from them alone is more than enough to buy every single item on the stage. You're essentially enabling yourself to lose a massive chunk of your gold at any point past the second loop of a run with no real benefit. The excess gold you get will be completely wasted. All right, and that does it with everything I wanted to cover on Brittle Crown. Do you have further questions or have a differing opinion on when to take it? leave a like or dislike on the video and a comment below. I read them all, I promise. You could check out my stream over at twitch.tv 
twitch.tv slash woollygaming and consider joining our Discord server for a place to play with others or simply talk about the game. Thank you for watching and be on the lookout for my next video covering the infamous topic of shields versus HP.